41 degrees at 745 on April 26th. That's up from the 30s earlier in the day, T-Rex. <laughs> With another cold start. We had radiational cooling last night in a clear sky with light wind and dry air. Temperature goes down very quickly. So even though the nights are getting shorter, we managed to cool into the 20s, even some teens. Come on, Steve. Oh yeah, and I wanted to show you the barometer. What is wind? The barometer, 30.50 inches. You know what that is in millibars? We talked about it the other day. That's... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's wrong, Rex. It's not. Ruh, 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 ruh. It's ten thirty-three millibars. Look at him go. He's all stuck. We need new systems for you guys. He's barking at smells, right? <laughs> that's what dogs do. It was calm. Here's the view this morning. Rex woke us up at about five. And it was getting bright out, so I went outside. Well, I didn't go outside, I went to the window. <laughs> I made this video. Uh, it was still at that time, and the temperatures were sub-freezing in most of the Northeast. Please, Rex. So as soon as the sun comes up, uh, it mixes up the atmosphere. So what is a still sunrise becomes a little bit breezy because the sun now has been working on warming the land for close to two hours hour and a half anyway. And so the warmer air over the land starts to rise and the cooler air that's over the ocean, yeah, already, uh, it's that much warmer inland, uh, creates this breeze from the Northeast. <laughs> How cold was it? 19 degrees on Martha's Vineyard this morning. Uh, reliable records only exist here since 1998 but that's the coldest latest on record since 1998. So if you're 26 years old, that means in your life. Beating out uh, May of 2001, it was 21, first week of May, 2001. So some of the, one of the coldest April 26ths uh, we've had in we'll call it 23 years anyway. Uh, the cold air is heavy, it's dense, it sinks. That airport, MVY, Martha's Vineyard. Now, the island is not necessarily the coldest place. It just happens to be that that thermometer is located at the airport, MVY, and there's the topographic map. You see hills to the north and west, and even closer up, a hill just to the east of the thermometer. So it's practically at sea level on this flat patch of dry land. I know there's some estuaries south of it, but call it a, a sandy bowl where the cold air fills as the sun comes up. The temperature went down from 21 to 19, and then right at sunrise, the temperature usually goes down in these colder inversion situations. But it is a cold air mass. Summit of Mount Washington, still in the ice, uh, it was only uh, 13 degrees, while at 4,000 feet, it was 28 degrees. Uh, so uh, below that, it was 23 at Pinkham Notch, so there's an inversion, but it's still a cold air mass uh, in general. And we had records this morning from Oscola, Michigan to Chatham, Massachusetts, 20s and 30s. And there's the temperature map I got at about, I don't know, 5 a.m. or so. No, it was about closer to 6 a.m., just before the sun came up. And so you see a lot of numbers in the teens and 20s, so just terrible news for the, the fruit farmers. Uh, their crops came up early. I mean, their, their buds came out early because of the warmth we had in March and part of April. It was a warm, snowy mid-March to April, snowy in the mountains. And I love all the uh, spring skiing imagery coming out of Sugarloaf and Killington and Jay. Uh, it looks like a pretty nice day again today with sunshine. High pressure is right over us. Uh, starting the day, though, with severe weather in the middle of the nation. Uh, tornado watch in eastern Oklahoma, even as the sun comes up there. It looks like I'm going to have to take this camera in. The edges of the video are just fading. Of course, it's not doing this second. I was doing it when I was talking about, yeah, there it is, uh, Mich uh, Oklahoma. So there's a plane up there, and yesterday someone commented, they've they never, they never seen condensation trails. Yes, condensation trails exist everywhere uh, from the the planes causing uh, lift above the wings and uh, well it, 
high pressure at the bottom of the wing, low pressure at the top of the wing causes uh, cooling and condensation of the vapors, exhaust vapors and the H2O that's in the air. That's what a condensation trail is. Uh, there's a plane taking off steep out of Logan Airport towards the northeast. So that's what happens. Planes take off into the wind. There's a wind from the northeast. There it goes. I appreciate all those comments too. And also the, what is it called? Flitterly moth that we had in yesterday's video. All right. Observations. That skiff that's been underwater sticking up at low tide right now. And surf has been up. And surf buddies are talking about surf's been up because it's a storm. That storm that went offshore did uh, generate some surf. So what's going to happen? There have been some changes to the forecast. All right, tonight we're going to have this high pressure system still over us. So there'll be a few spots again tonight that get to frosty levels tomorrow morning. And then on Sunday, you have a few showers around here. There's a warm front, doesn't really show it there. And then you have a front that stretches from eastern Canada all the way down to Texas. And you see that other H in the upper left there, that high pressure system in central Canada? That's another cold high. And we've been talking about how next week, the cold high we have now should be south of us, generating warmer weather on its backside, the return flow from the southwest. However, there has been some changes in the guidance, and it now shows that that high to our north may try and take over, and that changes the ball game altogether. If even though we're in a warm air mass, we get a low level wind from the northeast, that'll be cool air and an inversion undermining the warmth with a dew point in the 50s, that could get really not pretty. Unless you like watering uh, your garden from the clouds, it may end up wet here. More in the gardens in a set guard garden in a second. Anyhow, uh, the pivotalweather.com, that's where we get these sequential map series, did not have the euro last night, so we're going to use the GFS. I, I, the euro went out to 90 hours and it agreed with the GFS that there's a potential for a backdoor cold front. Okay, so here we go. That high pressure is still over us tonight, tomorrow, and then we have a warm front going by or a trough on Saturday night with some showers, mostly at night and mostly north, but. It could leave us rather damp and gray Sunday morning as the warmer air tries to come in. I think where the sun comes out, especially away from the ocean on Sunday, we'll have some readings in the 70s. I know I talked 80 earlier, but now it's changed. So the low's going far to our north there. The same storm generating the severe weather is going to push a cold front down into Maine. And it looks, you have to really look closely, but it looks like we're going to have a higher pressure to the north and east than we are to the south and west. And that means an onshore flow in much of New England not just localized, but all the way into the Connecticut River Valley with lower clouds and cool air, maybe fog and drizzle here, developing late Monday into Tuesday and Wednesday, and even shows some snow there in northern Maine Tuesday, Tuesday night. That's how cool that high is to the north. And then that kind of eases out of here Wednesday, Thursday. Now, technically, we'll be in a cooler air mass, but if the winds from the west and the sun comes out, the bottom line is the temperature will be warmer the second half of the next week as opposed to the 80s I was talking about possibly from Monday and Tuesday. Yesterday now looks more like the 50s, 60s west. Sorry, it has to do with trying to get the wind right. And then after that, the GFS actually goes out 380 hours. I'm not gonna show you that, but it does show another kind of system coming at us next Saturday. There's one to the west and one to the south, and that would be onshore flow and not pretty. I'm talking now about eight days out there for next weekend. Brewster and Bloom weekend. Could have a northeast wind. Uh, like we have now, but the air would be more moist, so it wouldn't be a blue sky. And if you don't have a blue sky, that changes everything. All right, more in the gardens. Found this thing yesterday. All right, now I think I know what it is, right? That's that's a black walnut, and it was starting to bloom in there, but I don't, <laughs> down there, but I don't have a black walnut tree. I think the squirrels take these things and move them around. And that's why you find them everywhere. Oh my goodness. Speaking of finding things everywhere, what did I do with the cat? Oh, I did not hook Steve up. This is not good. All right, time out. We got to go on a Steve hunt. Oh, good. I was counting on you being tangled up around something. <laughs> a couple of chairs, the light for the flag. Got the critter cam, which I have not checked, but I made more of a mesh there. <laughs> but when I do check the critter cam, you're going to see a lot of us playing around. All right, Steve. Thanks for being there. Back to the garden. So we worked in the garden yesterday, and you'll see that in the end more. What I did with that rose, which is gonna bloom soon. The lettuce and peas are doing fine. So lettuce and peas have no problem with this kind of weather. 
Uh, it's it's more the uh, tender vegetation, which I don't really have any of in yet. Anyhow, so I compost pile was moved over to here. Generally, I move it over to here, but this is now turned into a rescue garden, and the rescue garden now is a cedar too. That's those things just grow out of nowhere, and I decided to save it. So, uh, really rich soil. All this soil you see right here is uh, I, the result of TK's worm farm. It's beautiful. I call it uh, Tim's premium. Uh, it was mulch, but the worms made this out of stuff like this. And there were so many worms in here yesterday. It's uh, I'm not going to be able to find one live for you, but they're in there. And the question of the day is, do worms have eyes? <laughs> because as I was turning this over yesterday, I picked up a tiniest worm. And it looked like, to me, it had eyes. <laughs> Does that look like it has eyes right there? Do worms have eyes? All right, so you get these veins of worms. Now back to live. Well, live uh, being about 8 o'clock in the morning. Do worms have eyes? I do not know. I don't know a lot about worms. I just find them fascinating, and I know that they're a key to life. We would not have life without worms. And next uh, in the ocean, it's whale poop. So whale poop and worms, so important. And more and more and more. Let's go to the and more. Just uh, bird sounds yesterday. Walking around with T-Rex. He was much quieter. Focus uh, up the great hill there. And uh, trying to identify some of the trees, which are growing back very quickly. And the sounds of the birds. And I love when you comment and tell me what kind of birds they are. I didn't know all the sounds, but that's a T-Rex sound. We've had enough of. And Steve is fine. All right. To the and more from yesterday. Talk to you again tomorrow. Out a different door. 9.30 in the morning, Thursday, April 25th. Haven't even finished publishing today's out the door weather and more, but we got to get this. No, not that. You're on there all the time, Steve. The flag? Nope, that's not it. The smoke at the fire training center? Nah, see that a lot too. But we haven't had a freighter go by in some time. Tanker, freighter. K-A-N-A L-A being guided by the tug Justice. And once again, you stand one of these on end next to those towers in Boston and they're about the same height, over 600 feet. In this case, it's length. All right. Just because it's so pretty and it happens. Well, I, should, I was going to say infrequently, but I haven't had one in a while. They actually go by quite often. This came in yesterday. All right. Let's get back to editing. Is that one of my song sparrows? Can you sing us a song? Trying to read it, but my eyes aren't that good. Get back to you on that. It's chilly outside, but we get some nice passive solar going on. We just finished editing our Thursday out the door. Let's go out this door in the front yard. Check out the flowers. You can smell the narcissist. Rex, stop. Just wait for TK. The tulips are open. Mmm, smells really good. So we did manage to save some of our tulips. Those are gonna be beauties. Here's the song sparrow. Junkwool, is that another word for these things? Junkwool, narcissus, blue sky. It's convergence aloft, subsidence, high pressure. T-Rex is going to find Lucy, it looks like. See all the petals on the ground? They were flying through the air when that squall came through yesterday. All the way from about three yards over down there. Yeah. We call it May snow usually, but it's happening in April this year. With the, the white flowers and pink petals getting uh, dislodged from the trees as they go green with leaf, leaf in. Oh, blue plane alert, blue plane alert.
hiding behind a wire. Oh, I can't tell you how irritating wires are, except for the fact they bring electricity. <laughs> Saw some really big turkeys up here yesterday. Tis the season to start new families. What kind of nest is this? Looks like a uh, human nest. A dug nest. Lived, camped here for a time. Gear looks like it's in pretty good shape. I think we'll just let it be. I don't know what to do with it. What do you do with it? come across something like this in the forest. This is good shit. I don't know. Ooh, perfect shit. I'm leaving it for a day. Think about it. Correct. Uh, trees come down. These trees were uprooted recently. In other words, in the last two or three months. So many wind storms, I've lost track of them all. That one over there was uprooted earlier. And this is where the meadow mix was planted about 12 months ago. Is this meadow mix? That's not weed. Let's see. And it's supposed to reseed itself, right? Is that called uh, garlic mustard or something like that? Where are the turkeys? They're gonna be around here somewhere. Those trees are growing back so fast. They were all cut down in the last 18 months. Maples are like weeds. I'm assuming those are maples. Closer look. No, not maple. Where are they? Birch? Ask your app. Ask your iNaturalist. iNaturalist says poplar. That makes sense. Growing tall, fast. Is that all poplar? That's sumac over there. All right, so poplar, sumac. This is just terrible stuff. And T-Rex, Tyrannosaurus rex. Very rare in these parts. Cardinal. Loud cardinal. <laughs> perfect blue sky oh yeah and if you have some junk in your garage that you don't want anymore just bring it up here to the park and, and just drop it off and make it someone else's problem thank you thank you very little and on a more sad note banksy missing black cat with a little white on its chest three years old from lindale ave Last seen on Lindale Ave last week, two weeks ago. Banksy, Banksy, sad. What's that? Beale Street Beauty. Where are the birds singing? Pretty, pretty, pretty. How about this? Summer's worth of basil for four dollars. Organic, I don't even care about that. Four dollars. This will last you the whole summer. I feel like we're becoming friends. Mr. Grackle. You see what's coming in next to the whole gut over there? Massive. Hey, photo bomber. Massive tanker. That's nine times zoom. I can read that it says evergreen on the side of it. Going to Falcon Terminal or somewhere like that. I'm not sure the names of all the terminals. That's as zoomed as I can go. I guess I could try and take a picture of it. Why don't we just let this little leisure boat go by? 
maybe turn it into a tiny time lapse because we haven't done that in a day. <laughs> turn it a little bit like this, a little straighter. Come on, stop. Good. All right, that was all of a uh, two and a half minute time lapse. That's enough for that. More on wind now. Wind is air moving from high to low pressure. A lot of times you'll hear us talking about a sea breeze. That's when the heating of the land causes the pressure to be lower over the land than the colder water, and that creates an onshore flow. Maybe a little of that going on, but today we also have a synoptic scale as opposed to mesoscale. High pressure system over Maine and lower pressure over the Midwest, so that also induces a wind coming in from the Northeast. So it's more than just a sea breeze. Maybe it's a slightly enhanced sea breeze, synoptic scale wind from the Northeast, high to low pressure. I call it as I see it. It's definitely some heating of the land going on. Where it was in the 20s this morning, it's probably in the mid 50s. While I was in the 30s this morning, I'm only about 52 degrees right now. So living near the ocean causes less of a diurnal temperature change. Diurnal, difference between day and night, or cycle, day and night cycle. Can you keep it down up there? Try to make videos. So this rose, it's gonna be beautiful. It just got the golden glove treatment. That means I removed all the grass around the edge of it. It's a modest garden indeed, but at least you get to pay very good attention to each individual. Justice, you coming or going? Is there gonna be another tanker going out tonight? Do you guys watch the videos? Anyhow, beautiful sunset. After such a cold start, that sun, all the people told me, the guys on TV today said it's as high as the August sun. Yep, it is. It does a good job. But when it goes down with a clear sky and light wind, it's called radiational cooling. All the heat from the day radiates into space with dry air and light wind. And Martha's Vineyard Often the cold spot. I think it's the cold spot on Saturday and not Friday. Because the high is still kind of north. I'm going with like Freiburg, Maine. Somewhere around 15 degrees. How did I do? <laughs> uh, just so pretty. Hundreds, if not thousands, of worms right there. But I need some of Tim's finest worm chow from a couple years ago. Going out front. I don't really know how it happens. To me, it's just a miracle that you can turn your leaves and grass into this. And there from life comes. Are those little tiny baby eyeballs? Oh my goodness. No wonder the birds like it here. Come and get it. I mean, look how big that thing is. Yeah, that big.
Birds have to compete with boats and planes and cars and loud weather, man. Cardinal, you all know that, right? Captain Spacetime on the piano. <laughs> 